Hi, I'm Rishi. I'm an actor. In 2022, I played the role of a drug dealer in a short film. I've now been invited to speak with people whose lives have been impacted by drugs in one way or another, to find out if there is indeed truth behind the stories of drug abuse from first-hand accounts, and perhaps get some insight on how to deal with the issue of drug abuse if someone close to me is affected. I'm meeting Vic, a counselor at IMH who specializes in addiction. Afika, who's taking care of her nieces and nephew almost like a foster mom because the sister's still in recovery. And Ryan, who had to be there during his friend's struggle with drug addiction. Hello. Hi. Hi. So how are you? Hi, Rishi. It's Vic. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. This and is a lovely house. Thank you. The Institute of Mental Health is nearby. Oh, that's where you are. You are yeah. at I'm at Yes, okay. I'm at, uh, at the addiction department. I've been there about uh, 21 years. Yeah, I spoke to a couple of a uh, couple of guys. Uh -huh. Their relationship or with their family it was not fantastic. Uh -huh. so I guess, like, do you think that that is often like one of the biggest things that plays a part? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of times. I mean, many of them who do use drugs. Some of them use substances as a way to cope with their difficulties. They don't deal with problems a healthy way. So some, some of these uh, youths are at higher risk than others of developing problems with their substance use. Okay. They will have a tendency to gravitate towards uh, people or, or things that are not so good. Uh. Yeah. This, this whole thing about addiction is always a, a progressive thing. It, does, it, does, it doesn't just happen like that. So it can have a big negative impact. Uh, sometimes some family members isolate themselves. Uh, from the rest of the people they're supposed to connect to because if they find out their loved ones has addiction problem, they don't want people to know. You know, there's this Asian saying, uh, don't wave your dirty, dirty laundry outside. Uh. So I have one older sister and one older brother. Where your sister is? Uh, currently now, she's uh, in the halfway house. Okay. Yeah. So uh, during her, I think, time there, then her kids are with me. Okay. I've been like taking up her role as a mother. Right as early as when I was 14 years old. Yeah, because I even tell her off saying that um, you don't have to care about me, you don't have to care about this family, but you have to care about your kids. Okay. For my parents, actually they are disappointed, but then they, I can say they see it coming. My older sister is actually an adopted child to my family. Her mom was in prison for drug abuse when she was a child. So it's like, a, I would say a loop of generation that passed down. If there's anything, any problem, then parents need to build that relationship with their kids. You know, if there's a problem, please come and tell us. We'll try to do anything we can to protect you. And of course, some kids may walk away. Some kids may uh, be assertive, like others may not. Like. The best thing I always say is teaching your par the parents how to engage their kids better. Right. Yeah, looking out for signs that could be problems. You know, your kid is disengaging from the family. They're disappearing from home, you know, coming back late. They're, you see a change in their moods. Um, you know, these are little indicators that may be problems. Are... I've known Isaac since I was 14, so about 12 years. You guys met in secondary school, is it? Yeah. When we were in poly, he wasn't really like a druggy. Okay. But like after when we were in NS, we got talked about it like, hey, you got tried this before. But like, I've never tried it. So like, and then he would like say he want to try it. Okay. So one fine day, his mom called me. Police come the house and knocked the door a few times already, but he wasn't at home. Like, I just told her like, uh, actually, uh, Isaac has been like taking drugs. Mm. And then the mom cried. And then after that, police came again, then uh, brought him out. So after that, like, the mom actually wanted to like give up on him and all. Right? But then I told the mom like, you can't give up on your son right now. And then the mom was like, uh, you should have told me earlier that we can find a way to help him. You know, just have that talk with them. Lah. I'm not sure whether the friend will listen, but in some cases they do. Lah. Okay. You know, right. they say, look, we are here for you. Uh, you know, you may be going through, you may not fully understand what you may be going through, but you know, we are, we, you know, we are here, we are trying our best to see what we can do to help you. Lah. You are our friend lah, and we care for you. I'm, I'm going to separate the person and the drugs. I don't like your relationship with the drugs. And, uh, you know, I want you to get help. Lah. Yeah. And uh, even then, like, kids are kids, they're going to make mistakes. But, you know, it's how to, we try to engage them as early as we can uh, before they make bad mistakes. Uh. Uh, she told me that he promised that he really wouldn't touch these drugs anymore. He woke up because uh, he saw his mom, how, how bad the mom cried for him. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, then what, what, what's your plan for? moving forward. Yeah. 
I think he's very blessed to have his family to be very supportive. I also told him that, uh, you know, if you have any triggers or what, you just call me or your mom, uh, like we can just drag you away or something. Like you just call us so that we can be there for you and then we can distract you with something else. Like maybe watch a movie or something so that you go, don't go and think about all these things. And they sh family shouldn't blame themselves, whatever happens to a loved one. Their loved one got into that problem, and, but it definitely affects them. And uh, so family also needs, they also need therapy and uh, we try to encourage them to seek some kind of help. And I don't want to say that we look at relapse as a failure on their part. Uh, it's always a learning opportunity to, if you make mistakes, try to learn from it and see what you can do to strengthen your plans and move forward. Uh, and reach out to people who want to help you. Uh, because we can't do this alone. I, I mean, even we have a counsellor, a doctor, or any other addiction professionals, uh, you know, we can't do it alone. Uh, we also need that person to connect with, with us and work together with them right. for them to get better. La. She's a very smart person. Like, it's just yeah. that she's stupid when it comes to life decision. So first time maybe uh, like fall back or maybe a, like, you know, a wrong decision making. Then if it's the second, maybe it's a relapse. Yeah. Then it's third time or more, it's just, it's just your stupid choice. Because okay. third time is, you know the harm to it and yet you are doing it. So the third time is really a choice. To me, like, the family was broken when she left. Usually, uh, my sister will call the, the oldest. But then my niece will just reject the call. Yeah, because she already like, have her mind fixed, like I hate my mother. She knows yeah, which is, what I, the whole situation Yeah, is. I told her like, you are not supposed to hate your mother. I'm not teaching you to hate your mother. I hate your mother, that's my problem. But you are not supposed to hate your mother. So it will affect everyone. So don't have that mindset that you are not affecting anyone. You may have a downfall like, why is my life such a big hole of mess? But you don't know what's in the future. The world doesn't revolve around you. You are in it. <laughs> it's like, just be out in the lookout. Yeah. Yes, our services develop, uh, our structure develop. Uh, we can keep more and more youth safe. We can help more and more people with addiction-related issues. Uh, we can try to break that stigma that's associated with uh, addictions. You know, they always have things like, a leper cannot change its spots. Uh, you know, you, you know right. they'll always be like this. But I have this corny thing, like I say, a leper can change its spot. Uh. It can choose to do something different against the nature, even though it's not easy. Vic's words stayed with me for a while, especially after meeting Ryan and Afrika. I realized we have a place in keeping people close to us safe, and I saw the damage we could do if we stay silent or apathetic. It makes me reflect on how even I have a part to play in my own environment. What I think and say matters. It's been a privilege meeting these people. Their stories are relevant, especially to young people like me.